part of it. Amen. Amen. Thank you, God. Yeah, I'd like to say uh, there was a lot of a lot of times. I go, like I said, I go to work. Uh, I have a, a 35 to 40 minute drive to work, and it gives me plenty of time to reflect and, yeah. and pray and, and do all those things. And there was about I'm not going to say what they are, but there were about three or four things that I asked for that day, or, or each day, I should say. And each day this week, three or three or four things came out. That's how good the Lord is. I mean, you know, and it wasn't nothing major. It wasn't like I asked for a fortune, or I asked for a new car, or I asked for anything like that. You know, I just, I just asked for a couple little things for the Lord to, to come through for me, and the Lord came right through for me. Exactly the way I asked him to come to you, you know, and and, and uh, you know, and if he didn't come through, that would have been fine too. But at the same time, he came through. So I just want to say thank the Lord. I want to thank him for my grandchildren. I want to thank him for my children. I want to thank him for my wife, and I hope they get home here safely. And I just want to uh, just thank him for all the things that he does for me. Um, I mean. Everything is not perfect. Everything is not great all the time. But I'm here standing saying, thank you, Lord. And that's what counts. Like I said, we have one thing to do and one thing to do for only is to praise the Lord. And the praising the Lord is one thing. But there's an umbrella up under praising the Lord. There's a lot of things you do to praise the Lord besides saying hallelujah. There's a lot of things that you do to say Lord, I thank you for all that you do for me because that's what you do for others. And you shine that light and others will see that light without you saying one single word. And that's what you, that's, that's praising the Lord. That's what, 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 what it's all about. So that's what we're here today to do. Anybody else with a testimony this morning? I want to thank the Lord for the legacy we have in this house today. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yes, I'm glad to be here. Thank the Lord for getting me here, traveling here safely. Amen. And I was in town. I had my talk. I'm out visiting my husband's resting place. Uh -huh. I got married about a year ago, so I said, let me go back to my own church, visit mm -hmm. my church family there, and brought my sister. She's here, Liz Taylor. Amen. So, Well, it's good to see you. I see you on Facebook all the time. So I, so I feel like I see you all the time. <laughs> all, all the time. Anybody else with a testimony? I think we're back on Facebook now. So now, now that we're on Facebook, I did want to say that uh, we got our vote coming up on August 8th. Uh, we need to vote. We need to go out and vote. Uh, we've been um, advertising, uh, not necessarily advertising, but promoting uh, voting for, for the 8th. We just don't, we don't want to forget that because that's an a, a issue that we need to get resolved. Amen? Amen? So I just wanted to say that while we're on Facebook. And of course, anybody that's on Facebook, you can always join us, first of all, for uh, Sunday School at 1015. Um, we, we, we go on the line. Uh, our, uh, the numbers, I think, is on our on our Greater Bethel page. Also, there's Bible study starting up, I think, this uh, next, not this Wednesday, uh, August 9th. August 9th, we'll start again with our Bible study uh, on Wednesday. And uh, the numbers are also on our website. And of course, we have church... Uh, at 11, starting 11.25 on Sunday morning. So you can join us on Facebook, you can join us in person. But either way, join us. Amen? Uh, anybody else with a testimony? There ain't, ain't many of us, so we can get them all in. Anybody else? Anybody else glad to be here? Glad to be here. 
Anybody else glad to praise the Lord this morning? If you're glad right. to praise the Lord this morning, stand on your feet and give him a hand. You know, sometimes we come to church and we, you know, it's like when we, it's like when you go to the, you go, I go to the gym. I know a few other people go to the gym. When you go to the gym, you just don't jump into your exercise. You don't just jump in bench pressing or you just don't jump in running. What you do is you stretch first, right? So let's all stretch our hands to thee. Let's get that good stretch in and let's, let's tell the Lord what we think about him. We love you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We are here for you today and only you, Lord. Amen. You may be seated. So I just want to thank everyone for coming out. Like I said, we may be small, but we can get them all in. So anybody else that has a, has a testimony, I mean, uh, you know how it is in the summer. People, people uh, you know, they take their breaks. They go on vacations. I mean, I'm one too. I go on vacation. So that happens in the, that happens in the summertime. But that don't stop me from praising the Lord. Amen. Okay. If, if, if no, no other testimonies, I'm going to turn this over to our uh, clergy staff. We're going to do our doxology. Let us all please stand for our doxology.
just here to thank you for myself. But for every Lord that's here and everyone that's under the sign of my new Lord. Father, I come this morning thanking you for keeping us and carrying us through our trials and tribulations. But Father, we realize and know that there are many going through and dealing with things. But Lord, we know that you are God. We just want to say thank you this morning because we don't always know, Lord, what is best for us. And we don't always do the right things, oh God. And Lord, sometimes we even stray. But we thank you, God, because you never leave us. You're always right there by our side. Yes. You dare to pick us up when we fall, oh Lord. And we say thank you. With all the traumas and tribulations and things going on in the world today, Lord. Father, we know that you are still in control. Mm -hmm. And we ask that you continue to lead your people's God yes, yes. in the right direction. Yes. The way that you will have us to go. Not man, God, but you. And Father, we ask that you have all of us to realize that this is still your battle. And we are just your tools and servants. So Lord, we come today to say thank you for using us. And let us be a part of the building of your kingdom. Now Father, I come asking prayers of our children all over the world, God. It doesn't matter where they are. Because there are so many out there suffering. And Father, I pray for all our fellow brothers and sisters throughout the world that are suffering and going through. And asking you, Lord, to shine your mercy and grace upon them all, even in our government, oh Lord. Because you are our God, and all belongs to you. And Father, please, please don't forget the sick and shedding. Mm -hmm. The ones that wish they could be to serve you, Lord, and not able to do so. And I thank you for providing care for them, oh God. And I thank you, oh Lord, for showing us your love that we might be able to give that love to someone else. Now I come this day say thank you for all your glory and bless this great church oh God and its leader bless each and every one here today and all their family throughout the world oh God in Jesus name I pray this prayer amen and amen, amen. <laughs>
It's a search me, O oh Lord title. And we're going to read the first 12 and then verse 24, 23 and 24. O oh Lord, you have searched me and you know me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You understand my thought afar off. Verse 3 says, you comprehend my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word on my tongue, but behold, O oh Lord, you know it all together. Verse 5 says, you have hedged me behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge, verse 6 says, is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? 8 says, if I ascend into heaven, you're there. If I make my bed in hell, Behold, you're there. Nine says, if I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the utmost parts of the sea, even, verse 10 says, even there your hand shall lead me. And your right hand, that hand of honor, your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall fall on me, even the night shall be light before me. Indeed, verse 12 says, the darkness shall not hide from you, but the night shines as the sky. The darkness and the light are both alike to you. Search me. 23 says, oh God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties. And see if, verse 24 says, see if there is any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. From all that dwells.
bring your tithes and offerings down the outside aisle at this time. And God bless each and every one of you for your giving. Let me hurry place uh, some music for us to come down and give our offering here to my last uh, The steward is supposed to save our offering to give it. I just want you to try it one time. Give it to the Lord and see if he gives back to you. she would have a great recovery. Uh, there may be some, oh yeah, Cleopatra uh, Adams is requesting prayers also. Now, we've, if anyone else has a prayer request that you can state briefly, just put your hand up and we will acknowledge it. Amen. All is well. Let's pray together. Gracious God, we thank you for this day and for this time together in your presence. We ask for God's blessings upon the sick and shut in and for families that are going through crisis and that they have never dealt with before. Be their 
for where we are in our lives and in some of the struggles that we experience. I've been uh, given the opportunity one more time to preach the gospel. I'd like you to look at the gospel of St. Luke. And we are beginning now at verse 13, chapter 24, verse 13. Now, that same day, they went where they were going in a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they were talking and discussing these things with each other, just Jesus himself came up and walked along with them. But they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you, together as you were walking along? They stood because their faces were down trodden. Our theme this morning is walking with Jesus in hard times. I've got some impediments, and so I want y'all to just bear with me, okay? Um, in our lives, we have a lot in common with other people. Can I get that box up there? And some of us have come to many different stages in our lives. Amen. There are several psychologists have written books and lectured on the life cycles of men and women. And we, this morning, are going to look at this life cycle of those who were with Jesus. They felt totally wiped out. Yes. Because for four years, they had worked with him, prayed with him, and now they find that their leader, the one that they put their confidence in, has been drugged out and hung on a tree and beat until he was dead. Most of us have different images of who Christ was and what he means to us. These three men, two men who were walking, when Jesus just joined in and started talking, they didn't understand it. Because they knew who they were and they knew what they, what they saw they had been lost to them. Yeah. There was no means of fighting back. This was the government who was executing Jesus. These disciples on the road to Emmaus had sad hearts. They had experienced this great disappointment because they felt that when he came into his kingdom that they would have a place and that some would be on the right and some on the left. Yeah. And they had political ambitions. Yet Jesus is the one who had come into this world because of his love and his commission by the Father to go and do whatever it takes to save this dying world. And so Jesus was obedient to God. And this is the involvement of it. Now, somebody might say, that doesn't sound good at all, that Jesus is really caught 
He is this, he is with the Father in all things. And this being one. And he asked him, they said, Father, could this cup pass away from me? And he said, no. And if they came to the nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. How many of us have faced challenges in our lives that we believe is divinely ordered and find that the obstacles are just too high? Amen. The mountains are too high to climb. Amen. And we want to go and do something else. Lord, you can use me doing anything else. Amen. 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 But this is what he was sent for. And he becomes death eligible soon as he was born. As all of us are. There is an appointment that each of us have. We don't know the day or the time, but we know that there is an appointment that our lives will end. Not in this tragic kind of uh, event that they are seeing in the crucifixion. Their hearts were burning with ink. And if you know about that burning, it's not physical. It's the burning that you experience when you see a loved one facing the time of their departure. Yes. When we sit by the bedside yes. and all is going the de desire, just opposite to the desire that we want. They did not have any choices in this. And so he was. He was the one who they had expected. And so it is our understanding that because he was the one, that there is something going to happen, that he's healed all these other people, he's broke up funeral possessions, raising the dead. What is he going to do for himself? And if there is nothing that he does but surrender in our lives, each of us go through various cycles, beginning with the earliest from our birth, uh, adolescence, early adulthood, middle age, any middle age people. All right, you want to stay stuck on middle age. And then we get to this elderly, this old. You get a little elderly first, and then we get old. And so they are going through this, yeah. wondering what's next. What do we have to live for now? Yes. They beat our Lord up. When you are just involved in the physical, it's a bleak picture. But if you are involved in just having insight into the commission and to the glory of God, you say amen. Amen. Because of whatever he calls you to do, it's okay. Now, some of us, we've seen in this beautiful family that's here this morning, the Bradleys, we see infants, early childhood, and adulthood, and middle years, and finally we get to the older adults. Ooh. What? what does the Lord have to say to you this morning if you are in either of those categories? And some people got stuck on being an adolescent. Amen. You know Amen. They, they, act, they act like they're young. And they come out looking pretty ridiculous because that stage had already passed them by in our human psychological understanding. And so that's already passed, but they got stuck there. Amen. We've seen some people get stuck in childhood. They act refused to. <laughs> We need 
need to invite and give us to the Holy Spirit to give our lives over to him. Those who do that can rejoice at each of the stages that they're going through, whether it's health issues or money issues. When we see what their lives are like, we can know that God has been with them. These men were walking after the resurrection, and they remarked that somebody had seen Jesus, that they had been by the tomb, and it wasn't there, and they don't know what to make of this or what to do next. We recognize from looking at it from this perspective what they were dealing with, that when you look around and whatever is going on in your life, you can't find Jesus. Come on now. And the absence of that yeah. is so depressing and downgrading that people get caught in traps. Oh, yes. A lot of people get caught yes. because they're trying to act out a different reality than what is theirs. Yes. Right. So we come this morning to say our hearts burn within when we think of what Jesus has done for us. Yes. How he placed us in families and with loved ones, people who came uh, along at a period of time when they did not even have personal rights, Say it. that Say they it. were in chattel slavery. And so, and so they had to come to a place. We are at a place where we don't want to look back. Come on. We can't go back. Right. The question is, in a great <coughs> majority of people that are here have heard about the people once being enslaved that look like us. And that didn't go on for just a weekend. Four hundred Free labor, and nobody is, is and, and they want to turn this thing around to say, well, we benefited from it. No. No, we ain't benefit from that. Because we could have benefited from that in Africa. However, what I want you to hear this morning is when you get to the bleakest place in your life, when you are going through these great stages of grief, where it seems like every time you turn around, you're losing a loved one, or there's some crisis going on, and you just want to say, here I am, Lord. Yes. Am. I'm looking to you. Yes. I'm depending on you, and I've seen you before, and you work miracles, and so I'm just going to trust you. When we can stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, we know that God is still alive. He's alive in our hearts, and all we have to do is submit. They ask each other the question, wonder why? Why? Who was this? Because he just disappeared. And they don't understand what is this. We are asking ourselves this morning, in many situations. What's next? Yes, Lord. We have people who are sitting in vigils in hospitals yes. and nursing homes wanting to know what's next. Yes. If this is as bad as it gets, we can't do anything else. Where can we go but to the Lord? So they started to call on the name of Jesus. When you start to tell the story and lift them up, there is something on the inside that starts to burn and give you yes. a renewed energy and life that even though your heart burns within, that you can go on and make this journey of life. You can live in a way that God has called you to live, to open up your hearts and let the Lord's light shine in. And 
and somebody says, shine on me. Shine on me. I wonder if the lighthouse will shine on me. I wonder if I will be able to be okay. I wonder how the next days are going to be. When you've gone through that kind of tragedy, it, it, when you then recognize, when you recognize that God was there all the time, yeah. all the time, when I didn't know how I was going to put food on the table for my children, God was there and showed me how to make a way out of nowhere. No way. Hallelujah. In Thank a you. dream, he showed me where the money was. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> I don't ever want to be that broke again that I would have to ask for that kind of prayer. But what I am saying to you this morning, that we serve a God whose name is Jesus. Yes. He came and became death eligible to give his life as the atonement of our sins. He atoned for it. He was paying the price just like they were slaying animals to pay the price with their blood. Jesus is now giving the price of his own blood for the salvation of humankind. Yes. Anybody who will accept it when we offer it, come to Jesus. Yes. Come to Jesus just now. He's able. He will bring you through whether it's adolescent or aging. He will bring you because God is able and he keeps on pouring it out over and over and over again. Yeah. He's yeah. going to fix it. He's yeah. going to fix it. And I plead with you this morning. Don't try to keep it to yourself. Amen. Amen. You don't keep it to yourself. The old folk you say, I just could tell somebody <laughs> what the Lord has done for me. I want to just tell somebody, I have to witness to this. Jesus lifted 